Hello and welcome to today's episode of Focus Atlanta. I am your host, Keisha Lancelin. Because April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, our entire show is dedicated to the protection of our children. The media gives us more coverage about child abuse than ever before. Um, they give certain cases a lot of airtime, but I think people get the idea that those cases may make up the sum total of the problem and they don't realize that there's for every hor horrendous or heinous case that there's millions of children out there that are suffering in obscurity. Child abuse has many different faces. It can run the spectrum from severe physical abuse to neglect and abandonment. There are guidelines for what it's abuse. Abuse can be neglect. Abuse can be not bathing your child or feeding them. There are so many levels. And, and abuse has a, a, a lot of different faces. You know, there's physical and, uh, and sexual, and that gets a lot of the press. Um, but the most damaging long term is emotional abuse and neglect. And neglect is actually the biggest killer of children. Even though it seems like protecting children should be everyone's concern, there are many factors that keep the issue at the bottom of the priority list. There's fear on the part of neighbors, friends, family, who fear to get involved in someone else's business, family members who fear to stir things up. There are nearly three million child abuse cases reported each year. Experts say the actual number is closer to nine million since most go unreported. If you go onto the governor's website, the latest statistics they have are from 05, unfortunately. So I'm not sure things have gotten better since then. But at that time, Georgia ranked 39 out of 50 in the welfare of its children nationwide. So we're in the bottom half. Uh, there is over 100,000 child abuse cases reported in Georgia each year. Some may see this issue as private or something that should only be discussed among family, but the effects of child abuse are far-reaching into society. Child abuse and neglect is known to be an underlying cause of many individual and societal problems, such as delayed development, poor academic performance, delinquency, depression, alcoholism, substance abuse, deviant sexual behaviors, and domestic and criminal violence. Abuse isn't isolated to childhood and then you kind of get over it. it, it has a, we say it has a shadow that stretches a lifetime. So that can be seen in your drug and alcohol abuse statistics, it can be seen in your criminal behavior statistics, in your delinquency statistics. Um, I think the numbers are 59 percent of abused kids will um, commit a crime as a juvenile. 28% uh, will commit a crime as an adult and 30% um, they are 30% more likely to commit a crime um, a violent crime so those statistics about crime drug abuse go hand in hand with the experiences that somebody had as, as a young person according to a recent congressional hearing in Washington DC in July of 2011 experts testified that they believe nearly 10 children in America die each day from abuse Probably the grimmest statistic is uh, the feeling that up to 10 children die each day because of abuse. Uh, the data shows around five, but the data also shows that, and studies have shown, that maybe up to 50 to 60 percent of the child deaths in America from abuse are not recorded as deaths from abuse. They're recorded as deaths from something else. So that five can turn into seven, eight, nine, ten. Abuse is not always attributed to bad parents. Often, it's the result of lack of education. Children do not come with instruction manuals. Well, at least in the Hispanic and Latin community, you know, it's very normal. Very normal to get slapped around, you know, slapped in the hand, you know, the, the belt, the shoe. Um, parents, they don't see this as abuse. They really don't. And to to break those cultural barriers, it's going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. We need mandatory parenting classes of some sort. Um, you know, there's a line in the movie Parenthood, which is a, which is a wonderful movie, uh, where the Keanu Reeves character s points out the fact that you need a license to catch a fish, you need a license to hunt, you need a license to drive a car, but anyone can be a parent. Children Without a Voice USA is a nonprofit organization whose focus is to educate the public about the issues facing our community and the way we neglect to protect our children. Children Without a Voice, or C-Wave USA, 
um, is a 501c3 nonprofit um, headquartered in Alpharetta, Georgia. Uh, our mission is to raise awareness of and prevent crimes against children, child abuse and neglect through education and advocacy. It's, it's really a very small organization of extremely driven and powerful people like Lynn Seahorn, the founder, and I just feel passionate about it. I think that speaking up and educating is probably the most important gift that we can give each other. By founding Children Without a Voice, or C-Wave, Lynn Seahorn has taken the abuse she suffered as a child and used it as ammunition to better her life and the lives of millions of children. C-Wave was founded in uh, late 2007 by Lynn Seahorn, uh, who herself was a uh, survivor of extreme abuse when she was young. She was in a group home uh, when she grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and she befriended a little five-year-old boy who had been raped by his father. And she promised him, and I think she was 11 at the time, and she promised him that no one would ever hurt him again. Unfortunately, she was being 11, she was in no position to keep that promise. And later on in life, I think the founding of Sea Wave was a way to keep that promise, not just to him, but to millions of children around the country. Please stay tuned for more Focus Atlanta. When we come back, we'll learn more about Children Without a Voice USA. Welcome back to Focus Atlanta. Through educational programs, Children Without a Voice, or C-WAVE, takes steps to teach adults and children alike ways to prevent child abuse. Moving to Atlanta, um, I was looking for an organization to, that I was passionate about and I wanted to be involved. I grew up in Miami, so just on researching on the internet, it just touched me when I went to the website. and. I love that you know it's a, an organization that provides educational materials to other organizations. The ultimate goal is to prevent child abuse, and we do that through our through our classes um, in 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 school for kids. Um, we do good touch, bad touch classes in preschool to help kids keep their bodies safe. Um, we do anti-bullying classes here in Fulton County Schools. Being a parent is the most difficult job in the world. As such, isn't it important to learn as much as possible about how to be a, a good and effective parent? Education, education, education from an early age, not only for children, for, for parents. I think that, you know, once a month, parents should come, be invited to come into the school and really be educated or, or you know, there should be information passed out what's right and what's wrong, because until you know, you can't address it. You know what? Nobody nobody's a perfect parent and you need to read books and you need to do your research like you would be for a job or for anything like that you need to make sure that you are fully prepared to be an effective parent when the time comes there will be times when you'll be faced with a crying baby and you cannot get them to stop they will not stop and they'll go on and on and on and parents who are who are ignorant of the tools the coping skills that we teach will sometimes resort to just taking that baby and just shaking them. And we show this, we have a, actually a baby simulator, which is a fairly high-tech piece of equipment that shows exactly how hard you can shake a baby and how long you can shake a baby to do very, very serious damage, even cause death. Today, it has become obvious that we also have to expand the definition of child abuse to include peer-to-peer -peer abuse. That was my main uh, the pain growing up, the bullying, the having a friend, somebody being in your closest, you know, your circle of friends and then insulting you and telling you, you know, how either ugly you are or you're so skinny, oh my God, you're, you look like an Ethiopian, you look like you're dying, things like that, things that you say, wow, then I must really be horrific. I think the culture in America, and again, this is changing, but I think the culture around, say, bullying in our schools uh, is that it's a rite of passage. There are about 160,000 children that miss school every day out of fear of being bullied. My bullying happened um, where I grew up in Miami. In Miami, you get bullied for several dis different reasons when you're a child, um, especially in school. Either you are very overweight or, in my case, being Hispanic, I was very underweight, very skinny, very frail. 
all my friends were like these voluptuous, you know, the typical little Cuban girl, Puerto Rican. So I was always the outcast and I was always made fun of as much as that larger child, um, the obese child. According to bullying statistics of 2010, there are about 2.7 million students being bullied each year by about 2.1 million students taking on the role of the bully. You know, for bullying, you have three players in that scenario. You have the bully, you have the target, and then you have everybody else, and they're all bystanders. The bystanders in that scenario have all the power. And it's not even do you do something or do you not. Uh, if you don't, you're really giving the bully tacit approval for what they're doing. The effects of, you know, self-esteem, um, they're really, it's very delicate because when you grow up being bullied by people who are supposedly your friends, and that's how a lot of this happens. You have a group of friends and children bully each other. They call each other names, but they have no idea internally what it does. The once childlike taunting of a student can lead to lifelong psychological issues and even death. As you've seen in news reports, bullying can lead children to ultimately to take their own lives. And so um, we feel like that is something where we can really make a difference. Growing up, then you start having relationships. You get into relationships and then you start accepting things that you wouldn't otherwise or should accept. Um, thank God I had a, um, a strong personality as well. So I would kind of, you know, be adamant and I would stick up for myself. But the pain I felt inside, um, I really didn't show that. I didn't show that pain. So that's what I grew up with. I grew up with knowing how to portray a certain image, but then holding it in, um, holding all the feelings in. And you grow up with insecurities and you grow up with an internal battle that I don't ever think you can get rid of. It's a battle forever. Because of its importance, Sea Wave has taken on the issue and placed themselves at the forefront of education by taking the message into the schools. The, the anti-bullying classes that we do in Fulton County Schools, um, at the end of the course, and it's typically an eight-week course, uh, the kids will get a certificate and they also get a little blue wristband that says Ambassadors for Kids. And that really seals the deal with them because we try to take this very seriously and say that this is a pledge that they're making and in that pledge, they pledge two things. They pledge that they are not going to bully anyone. They also, probably more importantly, pledge that they will stick up for those who are being bullied or abused. Education. Education, education, education. Parenting classes, going into the schools, and teaching children from a young age, I'm talking about preschool if possible, um, the do's and don'ts not saying nasty things. In addition to making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone physically or verbally, and excluding them from a group or on purpose, we now have the issue of cyberbullying to deal with. And we could be talking about a, a playground fight, we could be talking about taunting in the hallway, we could be talking about a cyberbullying situation. If you know, even know of what's going on, you're involved. And that's what we tell kids. You cannot choose to not be involved uh, if you know about it. As long if you, once you know about a situation, you are involved. And then it is incumbent upon you as a bystander, and especially if you're an A for K club member, to step in and, and either tell the bully that is not right, that is unacceptable, and you need to stop, or you befriend the target or lead the target away if it's a physical situation, or, and I shouldn't even say or, every time it needs to be reported to a trusted adult. Child abuse in any form, even peer-to-peer -peer abuse like bullying, is wrong and needs to be addressed in our community. We can diminish it, we can speak up about it, and at least we may be able to prevent, you know, very horrific situations from happening. When we come back, we'll highlight some ways Sea Wave has galvanized the support of corporate partners to spread the word about bully prevention. Please stay tuned for more Focus Atlanta here on CW69. Welcome back. You're watching Focus Atlanta, and I'm your host, Keisha Lancelin. As a nonprofit organization, Sea Wave could not have success if it were not for the help of caring citizens, volunteers, and corporate partners. We, you know, we're all volunteer. We do not have a paid staff. Motlick & Associates is a personal injury law firm that has been providing legal assistance to Georgia families for over 28 years. 
Our lawyers are dedicated to helping injured people get the compensation they deserve. We're headquartered right here in Atlanta, and since 1984, we have provided over 500,000 free consultations to Georgians across the state. In addition to our core business, Motlick & Associates has a long-standing commitment to safety education and injury prevention, which is why we're here today. We are so proud to support Children Without a Voice in their mission to help stop child abuse and bullying. Oftentimes, issues fall by the wayside due to lack of knowledge and education. Motlick & Associates realizes that the C-Wave Ambassadors for Kids program is too important to go unnoticed. Motlick & Associates is proud to be the founding sponsor of Children Without a Voice's a for k Club and Anti-Bullying Program. These programs are some of the best that we have seen and we know that they will make a huge impact in our communities. That's why David Motlick, our CEO and founder, has put extensive funding and resources behind the program. The Ambassadors for Kids Club, or the a for k Club, is an offshoot of, uh, of Children Without a Voice. It's something that our founder, Lynn, was very passionate about and um, has been trying, uh, really since we were founded, uh, to go, a direction to go. This program goes into the school system and ignites pride by standing up for one another. In schools, if you're wearing that blue wristband, kids are going to know that you have been through that training and they're going to expect that in a bowling situation that you will, you'll not even think twice to step up. So the Ambassadors for Kids Club is something that um, tries to foster those, those ideals, be a place for kids who are being bullied, and it also is a club for kids who want to make a difference in their peers' lives, and that's really where we want to go. Lynn and her team at Children Without a Voice work so hard every day to help protect our children against child abuse and bullying. But in order to carry out their mission, they need our help. Because they're a nonprofit, they depend on corporate and individual donations to keep going forward. Through public service announcements and other media, Motlick & Associates is dedicated to educating our kids about the dangers of bullying and ways to prevent it. The a for k Club anti-bullying campaign is about empowering America's youth to stand up and speak out against bullying. In the first PSA, the a for k Club national spokespeople, Nikki and Jolie Motlick, are talking directly to the victim letting them know that they are not alone, that the club is there to help them. We understand how tough it is to be bullied and want you to know you're not alone. Being the target of bullying is never easy. Having someone call you names or threaten you is embarrassing and hard. It hurts to be excluded or to feel like people don't like you. You don't have to suffer silently. The a for k Club is here for you. Get help and find your voice at a 4 kcluborg a public service of Montlick and Associates, Attorneys at Law. In the second message, Nikki and Jolie are encouraging bystanders to stand up and speak out against bullying. Bullying is wrong. In the face of bullying, there's no such thing as an innocent bystander. You can make a difference by joining the a for k Club. Don't be a silent bystander. Get the resources you need to take a stand, speak out against bullying and child abuse. We can't allow it to continue. Next time, it could be you. Together, we have a voice. Find your voice at a4kclub.org, a public service of Montlick & Associates, attorneys at law. Perhaps you can't look at a victim of bullying and see the physical scars of abuse, but the internal scars can be devastating, as is the case with emotional, sexual, or physical abuse. What I struggle with now uh, mostly is when I have a new project coming up or something that is intriguing or exciting to me, I feel an insecurity of I'm not going to be able to do it, I'm not good enough to do it. I still do it. I'm the type that will throw myself in the deep end, I'll jump. But internally, it's, it's, you know, it's an anxiety. I suffer from anxiety. There are many things that come with it. And I think what people don't understand is that those kids that are overly confident and calm about making decisions and things, it's because they've had early on support and education. You know, bullying happens everywhere. Every city, every school, every community, and the impact and the effects are devastating on our children. It is so sad when we see stories that a child has taken their own life because they've been bullied. And we know that these programs will help save lives. That's why it's so important to Motlick and Associates. Child abuse has no socioeconomic boundaries. It doesn't care about race, education, culture, or religion. It can and does happen everywhere. One out of four girls, one out of six boys will be sexually molested by the time they're 18. 
Uh, so you think about any group of children that you're around, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it, it encompasses the whole socioeconomic uh, spectrum. Now granted, in, in, in more challenged socioeconomic situations, the statistics are higher. But in places in, in wealthier neighborhoods, uh, it still exists. It exists on your street, I guarantee it. If you care about the issue of child abuse, there are things you can do to help. We need volunteers to commit to teaching these classes, which can oftentimes uh, be eight weeks long. Um, you know, if you're a facilitator for um, the Shaken Baby Syndrome classes or the Good Touch, Bad Touch, they aren't so much a curriculum, but you may have a class this week and then two weeks later we need you again and then again and again. So it's kind of an ongoing, kind of a chronic commitment, if you will. Learn more about Children Without a Voice USA and become an advocate for children. Please stay tuned to more Focus Atlanta. We'll be right back. Thanks for continuing to watch. As we enter into Child Abuse Prevention Month, make the time to learn how you can help a child today. We would like to encourage everyone to get behind Sea Wave and their initiatives. They have an annual golf tournament fundraiser coming up in just a few days. However, you can always volunteer year-round. The public needs to get educated, uh, the public needs to volunteer, and the public needs to donate. No matter what kind of gruesome statistics I give or how many times I remind you of Tyler Clemente, until you realize that the victims of child abuse are in school with your kids, at church with you on Sundays, and the perpetrators may sit in the office to your left, we cannot stop the horror for these kids who need it. I don't think the public grasp that it's happening on their street, that it's happening in their classroom, uh, that it's happening in their church, uh, on their sports team. Uh, it's, it's everywhere, and, and abuse has a, a, a lot of different faces. I don't believe that the horror Lynn Seahorn faced as a child should go unnoticed. Neither can I ignore the fact that she is not alone. Every day, another child faces terror at the hands of an abuser. Our websites are the best place to go. Uh, and again, for Children Without a Voice, it's www.cwaveusa.org. And then for A4K, it's uh, a4kclub.org. If you are that neighbor who hasn't spoken up, that classmate holding on to a secret for a friend, or that child threatened into silence. Speak up today. It's not your fault. Speak up about it. It's not your fault. I would say you're not alone, and I would say you have to tell. I hope that you will celebrate Child Abuse Prevention Month by supporting a worthy organization today. And I hope that you'll stay tuned to Focus Atlanta every week here on CW69.